All right, so we're still looking at the path that fluid takes um, as the kidney is making urine. Uh, let me uh, explain that the, this fluid of which I speak starts out as being almost identical to the plasma of your blood, almost identical. It basically is your plasma, but it's missing the larger proteins that are in your plasma. Remember I had you memorize that the proteins in blood plasma were particularly albumin, fibrinogen, and antibodies? Well, those things will not be a part of this fluid, um, but uh, it starts out right here at the renal corpuscle, and we describe that fluid as filtrate. Personally, I have a tendency to keep describing it as filtrate on its entire journey, but technically it starts out as filtrate. And once it goes into the proximal convoluted tubule, we're supposed to call it tubular fluid. And then it's tubular fluid until it pops out of the renal papilla. And when it pops out of the renal papilla, technically it's urine, okay? But Let's go back to talking about this other tracing that I was talking about. So the fluid is going to start here at the renal corpuscle. I told you about how it springs out of the glomerulus because of filtration and gets caught by uh, Bowman's capsule. Then it's going to go through the proximal convoluted tubule. Lots happens there. Then it'll go down the descending limb of the nephron loop. The descending limb is the first part. So if you're learning things in the path that blood flows, I'm sorry, the path that fluid flows, you'll know it goes down into the renal pyramid and then it comes back up again. So descending limb, ascending limb. And then after the ascending limb, it's going to be in the distal convoluted tubule. So it'd be hard to follow it here, but from the distal convoluted tubule, then it's going to go through the collecting duct. The distal convoluted tubule is technically the last part of a nephron, but more refinement of the fluid that's about to become urine will happen in this structure called the collecting duct. The collecting duct meets another tube here at the renal papilla, and then what drips out here into a minor calyx will be urine. A minor calyx is a little collecting vessel uh, this collecting vessel, the minor calyx, any urine we find there would have come from one renal pyramid. So all of the collecting ducts that are going through that renal pyramid drop their urine out here. Here's an area that we would cause a, call a major calyx, this area here. They're calling this a major calyx too. But if I could find a drop of urine in there, one that came from here, one that came from there, one that came from there, Technically, it's a major calyx. And then there's this big open area here that gets called a renal pelvis. And the renal pelvis, a drop of urine there could have come from anywhere in the kidney. And then the ureter is the narrow tube that the renal pelvis is sort of the funnel that sends stuff down the ureter. From the ureter, it's going to go in the urinary bladder. Remember, we don't call it the bladder, we call it the urinary bladder because we got a gallbladder too. So the urinary bladder, and from the urinary bladder out the urethra. So let's talk a little bit more about this first step in making urine. The first step in making urine is the step of filtration. And you did filtration in your labs. You've done filtration probably dozens of times in your lifetime. Every time you're done cooking macaroni or spaghetti and you pour it into a strainer, you are performing filtration. Filtration uses hydrostatic pressure to force a combination of stuff through a filtration membrane. Big stuff gets left behind, little stuff goes through, and we call the stuff that goes through filtrate. So when you're straining your pasta water, the pasta stays behind, the starch and the water goes through and technically becomes filtrate. So let's go back to the path of blood flow. Afferent arterioles got a bigger diameter than the efferent arteriole. 
afferent arterial sends blood into the glomerulus, efferent arterial takes the blood out of the glomerulus. We'll get back to that in a second. The fluid uh, kind of gets squeezed out of the blood. So just some of the watery part of the plasma comes springing out of these little holes and ends up captured by Bowman's capsule. Now we've got filtrate. Filtrate is almost identical to plasma. It is basically plasma that's missing the large proteins, albumin, fibrinogen, and uh, antibodies. Then it will get sent into the beginning of the proximal convoluted tubule. Of course, this is not the entire convoluted tubule. This is just the very beginning. And I'd like you to notice that the artist has drawn this as simple cuboidal epithelial cells. We will be talking about these simple cuboidal epithelial cells in some detail in a little bit. The proximal convoluted tubule is very long and very convoluted tubule, all curly cued up. This structure we're looking at gets called the renal corpuscle, but the term renal corpuscle, that's not one of your anatomy terms that you need to know. Um, great. So we know that Bowman's capsule, also called the glomerular capsule, has got a parietal layer and its visceral layer um, is made out of squamous epithelial cells that are really complicated and they are known as podocytes. Podocytes have got these little finger-like projections called pedicels. The pedicels interdigitate like this and then you can see there are little like filtration slits where the podocytes interdigitate. Mm, yeah, great image. Okay, this is a simplified image, and it remind it emphasizes that the diameter of the afferent arterial is larger than the diameter of the efferent arterial. And you should write this down. It is because the diameter of the afferent arterial is larger than the efferent arterial. It is because of that that pressure inside of this particular capillary bed known as the glomerulus is higher than blood pressure inside of any other capillary bed. Any other capillary bed does not have the kind of blood pressure inside of it that the glomerulus has. And it's because the pressure inside of here is high that there's more hydrostatic force pushing the watery part of the plasma out of the capillary and into this space called Bowman's capsule. Oh, I love these images. These are uh, trans, no, scanning electron micrographs. Uh, someone just did a beautiful job uh, creating, using electrons instead of light. And so a special kind of microscope. And you can see this is the afferent arteriole carrying blood into the glomerulus and coming out is the efferent arteriole. See how the efferent arteriole's diameter is smaller than the afferent arteriole? So if this is the afferent arteriole, then what is that blood vessel? That's a cortical radiate artery. So the cortical radiate artery to the afferent arteriole into the glomerulus, the efferent arteriole. Okay, then what is all of this? Peritubular capillaries. Isn't that great? And then they zoom in even closer. And here we see a glomerulus inside of Bowman's capsule. Here, Bowman's capsule is intact. So there would be cells, they, you can't see them clearly here. Oh, you can kind of see them right there. Uh, the podocytes interdigitating uh, on the outside of the glomerulus. So really, really beautiful image of the histology of the kidney. All right, well, we've talked a whole lot about the renal corpuscle. Um, I hope the picture is starting to make sense in your head. Uh, fluid is going to end up out here in Bowman's capsule, then go down the proximal convoluted tubule, then down the descending limb of the nephron loop, up the ascending limb of the nephron loop, distal convoluted tubule, collecting duct. Let's do it over here. Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, goodness sakes, descending limb of the nephron loop, ascending limb of the nephron loop, 
distal convoluted tubule collecting duct, right? So here is our summary of the flow of filtrate. Filtrate starts at the glomerular capsule, goes to the proximal convoluted tubule, descending limb of the nephron loop, ascending limb of the nephron loop, distal convoluted tubule, collecting duct. AP120, you don't have to know papillary duct. Minor calyx, major calyx, renal pelvis, ureter, urinary bladder, urethra. Let me remind you that for the purposes of our lecture material, the most important parts of this are the glomerular capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, descending limb, ascending limb of the nephron loop, distal convoluted tubule, and collecting duct. Why? Because these parts that I've underlined in red, these are the parts that are actually working together to create the substance that's called urine. The rest of this stuff, papillary duct and all that stuff, that's just, that's just pipes collecting and feeding it into bigger pipes, putting it into a collecting tube. That, like, all the, the hard work of the kidney has already been done. We will be talking particularly about these parts. And also we will be talking about particularly the afferent arterial, glomerulus, efferent arterial, paratubular capillaries, because those are the four parts of this vascular supply that are integral to understanding how urine gets made, All right? So filtrate just left Bowman's capsule. Where did it go next? Hmm, what's attached to Bowman's capsule? Pause the video if you need to, look at your notes, figure it out. What is it? Proximal convoluted tubule. From there, it goes down the descending limb of the nephron loop, up the ascending limb of the nephron loop to the distal convoluted tubule, okay? It never goes into an arteriole. Alrighty, we will start here at the beginning of the next uh, video.